Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, hello, my name is Kim. I go by Kim or Kiss Cousin Queen here on YouTube. I am continuing this series having to do with how I intuitively was drawn to Merope, is how you pronounce the name, in the Pleiades, which is one of the seven sisters of the Pleiades star cluster. And why I was drawn to Merope is because I kept getting the intuitive hit that Ariel, the mythos or the story or the fairy tale of the Little Mermaid or Ariel in and of herself was Merope or was derived from the Merope constellation is what I mean. So I got a lot of references and actual, actual validified proof I could even say. So um, we're going to go over this and just stick with me and then I'm going to probably have another video coming too but this kind of will tie things in a little bit more and then we're going to go deeper. So in the Pleiades, in Greek mythology, the Pleiades were the seven daughters of the Titan Atlas. He was four and they were, they were known as Oceanids, Oceanids and also Nymphs. We'll get into more of this but there were seven daughters of the Titan Atlas. Atlas was forced to hold up the sky for eternity and was therefore unable to protect his daughters to save the sisters from being raped by the hunter of Orion, the star system Orion. So Zeus transformed them into stars, okay, to keep them from being attacked by Orion. In Greek mythology, Mero Merope is one of the seven Pleiades, daughters of Atlas and Pleione. Pleon, their mother, is the daughter of Oceanus and Tithus and is the protector of sailors. So Pleione is the protector of sailors. Their transformation into the star cluster known as the Pleiades is the subject of various myths all around the world. Um, so according to NinePlanets.org, I was pulling up stuff about Merope. Merope is among the nine brightest stars in the gigantic Pleiades cluster. Merope, also designated as 23 Tauri, is a star in the zodiacal constellation of Taurus. Okay, so the Pleiades is located in Taurus, and Merope itself is designated as 23 Tauri. Why is this significant? This is huge. If you remember, 1023, which is my mother's birth time, coincides with the biblical gospel of Mary Magdalene that talks about resurrection having to do with Anastasis or Anastasia. Remember, I kept getting all those messages about Anastasia. Well, Anastasi Anastasis in Greek means resurrection, which coincides with my mother's birth time in the Mary Magdalene Gospel 1023. When I'm drawn to research, Merope is also designated as a 23. And remember, 23, the oracle was mentioned in the Bible 23 times. 23 is a huge, significant number. And it actually symbolizes a lot more. So when that came up and it was showing designate as 23 Tori, I was like, holy cow, yeah, this is why. Okay, so Merope is at 380 light years away from us. Remember the Pleiades is actually 444, 444 angel number from us. But this is actually, Merope is 380 light years away from the sun. Okay, it is much closer to us than most of the other Pleiadian stars. Um, Merope is a bluish white B type subgiant of spectral type B61VE. It is also classified as Beta Cephei type variable star since its brightness varies by 0 0.01 magnitudes. Out of the stars representing the seven sisters, Merope is the faintest among them. This is actually really significant. We'll get into this soon. Um, how it actually directly coincides with the story of Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Merope has an apparent magnitude of 4.18 and its absolute magnitude is uncertain. This star has a radical velocity around 6.2 kilometers, 3.8 miles per second. And Merope has around 5.1 solar radii and about 4.5 solar masses. This is much bigger than our sun. So Merope is actually much bigger than our sun. And the reason that I talk about these numbers is because just like the 23 Taurus uh, showed us is that these numerological numbers, these numbers in and of themselves point to numerology that has came up continuously. 
Also, I'd like to point out for the 23 resonates with the 223, which is the 322 backwards, which is Mary Magdalene's birthday. Okay, and it's also supposedly the day that Jesus rose from the cross. So there's that 23 again. Um, and remember, I had the 64 degree and the zero degree come up recently. That has to do with that Globus Crucifer where on the vernal equinox, which is March 22nd, supposedly as well, it makes a cross across the globe. And not only that, it lights up the cross on the Rennes de Chateau that lines up co uh, coincidentally enough. Well, they did it on purpose with that prime rose Magdalene line. Okay, and lights up Jesus and makes a cross in the church while he's holding the Globus Crucifer in his hand, which represents the earth and the, the golden cross across that represents the light shining, 616 just now on the clock, the light shining and making that cross on spring, which represents Easter, which uh, translates back to Esther, which translates back to Ishtar, which translates back to Inanna, and then the eggs, and then Mary Magdalene holding the egg as proof, turning it red as proof to Jesus' resurrection. It's actually the whole entire Earth's resurrection on that day is when we go from death of winter into the resurrection of spring and summer. So, huge. Um, that's why I like to look into the numerology patterns within the co constellation to actually highlight these things and intuitively bring them out because well, look how much information was just uncovered under the 23 in and of itself. So it's huge. Merope is the fourth brightest star out of the ones representing the seventh sister. So it is the fourth brightest. And notice how the Pleiades is 444 four, four light years from Earth. So lots having to do with sevens, fours. Um, also, the star has a surface gravity of 4.0 CGS. So there's another four. Merope's surface average temperatures have been estimated at about 13,360 K. So we have a 13, we also have 3 and 6, okay? The zodiacal constellation of Taurus and the Pleiades open cluster are visible enough that they've been known to the ancients. So they've been known for a very long time and studied for a very long time. The Pleiades cluster is very bright, though. It cannot be seen during May and June since the sun blocks our view of the cluster in this period. Merope appears to be a single star. However, it is enveloped by a nebula designated as NGC, one, four, three, five. Similar to the star Maya, which is itself also enveloped by a nebula. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Merope was the youngest of the seven daughters and the only one to have married a mortal. Merope was placed in the sky along with her seven sisters, becoming a mortal as a star, taking form in the star by Zeus in the night sky to escape Orion. Merope was the only, was the youngest of the daughters to have married a mortal. She's an immortal marrying a mortal. What was Ariel? Ariel was an immortal mermaid marrying a mortal human. Boom, this is huge. This is huge. Her husband was Sisyphus, the king of Ephyra, who was condemned to roll a large boulder up a hill. Remember running up that hill by Kate Bush, straight, which tied for Stranger Things. What is the pilot name of Stranger Things, Montauk? And remember how I saw Hill in the last video? One of the last of the two series that I just did on Mermaids. Huge, 919 just now on the clock. So it all connects, it all connects. Who was condemned to, a roll, to roll a large builder up a hill as punishment for eternity, for his deceitfulness. So her husband was punished to do this. Okay, Merope is also referred to as the Lost Pleiad. Since it is the faintest of the seven stars and thus not as easily seen as the others. And they say that it is the faintest of the stars because she hides in shame. 1001 just now on the clock, which equals 11, stranger things again. She hides in shame from having been the only one that married a mortal human. So interesting, out of the seven sisters, Ariel also did this. I also received a message earlier having to do with Sirius, tracing to this very comment here. So I'm gonna write down Sirius in parentheses so I can find where I found that and then reference back to that here or in the next series. 
We might not have enough time, but it definitely coincides here. Being the black sheep and all, I'll give you that as a clue. Ariel. Merope, along with its neighboring stars in the Pleiades cluster, formed between 75 and 150 million years ago. This open cluster is among the closest star clusters to Earth. All the stars in the Pleiades cluster have a common origin. They formed through a gigantic molecular cloud of dust and gas. Gravity pulled the swirling gas and dust together and formed the Pleiades cluster. The Pleiades cluster is overall dominated by very hot blue and luminous stars. Merope is situated at around 380 light years or 117 parcels away from the sun with an estimated error of about 20 light years or five parsecs. Merope has around 5.1 solar radii or 510% the sun's radius and about 4.5 solar masses or 450% of the sun's mass based upon its radius. Merope's diameter would have to be a, around 10 times bigger than the sun's. So Merope's diameter of that Merope star in the Pleiades is around 10 times bigger than our sun. 11.55 just now on the clock. Merope is a bluish white B-type subgiant at spectral type B61VE. The surface average temp have been um, estimated at around 13,360K. It is 2.3 times hotter than our sun. Is that not the 23 again? 2.3 times hotter than, see, this is why I do this. Merope is also 630 times brighter than our sun. And the star has a rational speed of at least 280 kilometers by 173.9 miles per second at the equator. And this is insanely fast. So this lake is a very quick star. Just point that out. This star has an apparent magnitude of 4.18. Merope is also classified as a beta Cephei variable showing variations in brightness of 0.01 magnitudes. This type of star often belongs to the spectral class B, and they exhibit small yet rapid changes in brightness as a result of pulsations of their surface. Among the best examples of other beta Cephei variables are Mimosa, Hadar, Spica, guys, Spica, I'm actually Spican and I'm Shawan, but we have Spica and Shala here and Merzam. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six other stars that are also in that category. We have the Merope Nebula. So this is information about the nebula. The Perseid star is enveloped by a nebulosity cataloged as NGC 1535. We went over that. The nebula is also named after Merope and sometimes it is referred to as Temple's Nebula. This is very interesting. We'll get into that here in a minute too. In honor of the German astronomer Wilhelm Temple, who discovered it in 1859. The diffuse reaction on nebula is the brightest around Merope, where it has an apparent magnitude of 13. Again, theirs of the nebula is fainter than the magnitude of 16. The Merope nebula is also part of a larger nebulosity that envelopes the Pleiades, which is a huge interstellar dust cloud through which the Pleiades stars are passing through. The cloud is actually dispersed by the star's passage. The nebula contains a bright knot. Remember when I kept getting the messages about the knots and then I found out about the Naga knots? That's gonna actually come into importance here too. Designated as IC one three as IC three four nine and located thirty-six inches northwest of Merope and of Merope in Taurus. So Taurus, toroidal field tornado and it's interesting i pointed out oh because it said northwest of merope in taurus taurus is also the toroidal field which also makes the same shape as a tornado it's actually referenced and shown as that and in the case of a tornado you're always supposed to go to the northwest area of your basement so i thought that was interesting that that tornado portal that toroidal field is located exactly in the direction of merope the knot is almost half of an arc minute wide, and it was discovered by Edward Ernerson Bernard in 1890, an American astronomer, and it is also known as Bernard's Merope Nebula. Merope is located in the, in the zodiacal constellation of Taurus, the Celestial Bull. This constellation is among the four, 48 Greek constellations 
first listed by the Greco-Roman astronomer Ptolemy in the, seven, in the second century CE. Merope is among the brightest stars of the famous Pleiades open cluster, which is situated in the Taurus constellation. The constellation of Taurus is also home to another great open cluster named Hyades, but I think it's pronounced Eades. This constellation is among the largest in the night sky and also one of the most prominent of the northern constellations, occupying an area of 797 square degrees. So there's a 797. I'm just going to highlight that. And the 77 and the 9s. Okay. The constellation of Taurus, apart from the two mentioned clusters, also has very interesting stars such as Aldebaran, Elnath, Elnath. What do they call 11 and Stranger Things? L. And there was a big significant reason as to why of this when I spoke to an astronomer about this. So I will also either insert that here or talk about it in the next video. It's highly significant. Also other fascinating deep sky objects such as the Crab Nebula, the Crystal Ball. Interesting how the Oracle is mentioned in the Bible 23 times and we have 23 literally laced throughout the entirety of Merope. Nebula merging galaxies, and many more open clusters. These celestial objects are best observed and studied during January. If you know anything about the month of January, that's a huge month. Um, whenever I see January, not only because it's my husband's birthday, but Capricorn is also known as the sea goat, which is depicted as a goat with a mermaid's tail. And it's also the date, uh, the date, my husband was born was actually a day before Tesla's death, which Tesla was born in on 1-7-1943. So we have 1743. And as you know in the last video, that came up a lot. But it's interesting how this Pleiadian um constellation is best studied during the time of January. So there's a lot of Tesla references kind of like laced throughout. Uh, my whole studying this, so it's really interesting. Uh, the Pleiades member. So Merope is among the nine brightest stars of the Pleiades. From October through April, these stars can be observed and studied. However, May and June are not suitable for observation since the cluster is too close to the sun. The Pleiades is among the closest star clusters to Earth and one of the brightest in our vicinity. Though the cluster is very bright and easy to find, you may also draw an imaginary line from the stars of Orion's Belt, which are Almatek, Almalam, and Mintaka, past Aldebaran, and find the cluster. The Pleiades cluster is also known as Messier 45. Lots of nines and sevens throughout this, um, the, and eights. The majority of the brightest and hottest stars here are of the spectral class B, and they formed between 75 and 150 million years ago. And one of them are far apart from Earth, and others are at around 444, there's that 444 again, light years away from us. The most documented and famous stars of all, named after the mythological seven sisters and their parents from Greek mythology. Nine sisters are Alcyone, Asterope, Atlas, Electra, Kalino, Maya, Merope, Tegeta, and Pleione. Now remember, Atlas and Pleon are the father and mother of the seven sisters, but they were included within the nine, okay? So the mythological story depicts the sisters as they caught the eye of Orion, a giant huntsman. Atlas, their father, being condemned for his battles against the gods, was condemned to carry the heavens on his shoulders, while Orion, the giant, pursued his daughters. And he said that Orion was so tall that he reached the bottom of the ocean and his head reached the top of the sky. However, the Greek god Zeus stepped in and transformed the sisters into doves and then into stars to console their father. Even so, and the reason he transformed them into stars was to hide them in the sky and make them immortal. Because by transforming them into stars, they, quote unquote, would live forever. Um, even so, Orion the Giant is still pursuing the Pleiades sisters across the sky, represented by the Orion constellation. So in the future, Merope will continue to exist for many millions of years. However, the Pleiades star cluster has been studied closely, and many computer simulations predict a grim future for the Pleiades. Most simulations suggest that the star cluster will continue to survive for 250 million years. There's another seven before it will start to disperse due to gravitational interactions with its galactic neighborhood. 
And did you know in the Harry Potter series, author J.K. Rowling used many star names for her characters. Merope is one such name given to the main antagonist's mother. Merope Riddle is the mother of Lord Voldemort. There is a huge reason why here, and we'll go over that either in this video or the following video, so stay tuned. You'll want to hit the bell so you don't miss out on this series because it's freaking phenomenal, and it connects so much stuff, and the reason why they've hidden so much stuff and made us think the opposite of things. The Chinese know Merope as the fifth star of what they call Harry Head, Harry Head belonging to an asterism formed by the Pleiades star. Now that I'm thinking about that, Harry Potter... So it, it's like she named the book after the Pleiades. This is interesting. Okay, this makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, belonging to an asterism formed by the Pleiades star, Asterope Atlas, Electra Maya, Merope Tegeta, and Alcyon. The Pleiades star cluster is believed to have been formed from a compact configuration that resembled the Orion Nebula. So very similar nebulas formed each of these, and they're like at odds with one another in accordance to the mythologies. Many cultures throughout the world knew of the Pleiades cluster since ancient times. One of the earliest depictions of the Pleiades cluster and its stars resides in the Nebra Sky Disk. If you've never seen this, I'm sure a lot of you have, but it's very interesting. It's a Bronze Age artifact dating to 1.6 zero 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 that's four zeros bce that's how long this constellation has been studied that was uncovered in germany many famous and ancient texts mention the cluster such as homer's iliad and the odyssey hesiod's work and days hesiod's works and days which is the title of his work and the bible the ancient egyptian calendar of lucky and lucky days and the Japanese Kojiki, an account of ancient matters, the 8th century chronicles of myths, oral traditions, and legends. And the Pleiades are mentioned in the Kojiki as the Mutsuraboshi, which is interesting, um, translating to six stars. So a lot of people say you can see six stars now, but not the seven. And there is like a really good video that I'll recommend, I'll probably link it below, where um, a guy researched into why this is in accordance to not only the galactic constellations locations, but also the earthly and the accounts of the stories and legends according to those and where it shifted and changed. So where it was documented that that star kind of disappeared or wasn't able to be uh, detected by the human eye. In modern Japan, the cluster is now known as Subaru. You know, the, the car Subaru. So remember a while back, I had taken a picture of the back of a Subaru and pointed out the stars on the back there. So that would be why there's actually more references to Subaru and what it means. And I'll get into that too here. The same name used by the famous automobile company that depicts the six brightest stars in their logo. And yeah, it's interesting because the way it's depicted, it almost kind of shows Orion depicted within its logo. So I'll get into that too, um, if I can. One of the first telescopic ob observations conducted on the Pleiades was during the Helos. Galileo Galilei observed the bright stars of the cluster and it, and it is noted that he may as well be the first to have done so. So he was the first one to have documented the stars. Daughters of Atlas and Daughters of Atlantis. The Pleiades started Lemuria and the Pleiades, the seven sisters, were known as the high priestesses of Lemuria as well. So these seven sisters were known as the Daughters of At Atlas and the Daughters of Atlantis. So if you know anything about Atlantis and Lemuria, that would be their connection to that. Um, So someone showed a video, it had to do with Melissa of the Magdalene Rose Temples on YouTube. She channeled Merope and connected it to the yellow and gold rays and also the red Christ ray or the ruby ray. And if you've seen my videos, um, Kaylin channeled something for me having to do with the ruby ray. And then it also connects into Dorothy's red ruby slippers having to do with like the root chakra. But then also... 
um, has to do with the solar plexus. And so remember when I was channeling McDonald's and the golden arches and the colors red and gold or red and yellow? And it has to do with the solar plexus and then the red root plexus. Um, so it all kind of coincides here. I'll just read some of my notes that I wrote down and then some more that I wrote. So um, the golden rays of the sun, solar flashes and eruptions enhance all your gifts and that's directly connected to your solar plexus. And whenever they have, if you've seen any kind of mermaid movie, it's always in reference to the solar plexus region. Um, we have a bunch of names that I wrote down that all actually connect in, which are Wajit, Isis, Merope, Ishtar, Inanna, Siren, Mermaid, Snake Goddesses, and Goddesses of the Ocean. And we have Merope in the Harry Potter series actually speaks snake. She speaks parcel tongue, and she is in reference with um, a necklace. And if you've known also, every mermaid video that I've done pretty much has some sort of reference to a necklace that they wear. Interestingly enough, Merope, <laughs> again like Ariel, she marries, a, she's a pure blood, okay? Meaning she's of the royal blood and she marries um, a muggle, which is known as a regular like mortal human. So that's the same thing. Um, as Ariel and Eric. Now, what's interesting is Merope Gaunt in Harry Potter, she makes a love potion to force her person, to Ta Tim Gaunt, I think, or Tom Gaunt, to love her. So she forces him to love her through a love potion and, and forces him through a sexual act to become pregnant with his son. His son becomes Tom Riddle. Tom Riddle becomes Lord Voldemort, the most evil one in the Harry Potter series. So very interesting, right? And then she ends up feeling guilty and takes the potion out of his coffee one morning. And then he leaves her because he's like, what the hell am I doing here? All this time lost. And you forced me to be in a sexual relationship with you. And I'm not going to love this child because technically I have free will. And you totally overrided my free will by forcing me to not only fall in love with you, but to have sexual relations with you, which cause you to become pregnant with a child that I didn't want in the first place. I never agreed to this, basically. And if you think about Ariel, she goes to the sea witch to exchange her voice for a potion to have legs to go on earth and basically seduce Eric. All in all, it's like the same freaking story, okay? So it's interesting. It has to do with unrequited love and all that. Okay, so... We're going to get into more here. Hold on one moment. Okay, so I did some other research here. Um, the Pleiades, their parents, bear with me. I know it's a lot, but it's going to make sense of everything here. And I need to speak on all this stuff because it'll connect things and you'll have aha moments like I did. Um, the Pleiades, seven daughters, the seven sisters, their parents were Atlas a titan commanded by the god Zeus to hold up the earth, and Pleione, the mythical protectress of sailors. Who does that remind you of, Sirens? So after a chance meeting with the hunter Orion, the Pleiades and their mother became the objects of his pursuit. To protect them from Orion's relentless amorous advances, Zeus changed them into a flock of doves, which he then set into the heavens. Zeus was also rumored to have further children with three of the sisters. That is also why the constellation of Orion still chases after the Pleiades, even still today. Meaning after Orion failed to conquer them. Meaning even after Orion failed to conquer them. The seven sisters are also known as the Water Girl or the Ice Maidens. Water Girl, Ice Maidens, Elsa, Sirens. Okay, due to their association with water, be it seas, rivers, rain, hail, snow, ice, or frost. The Greek legends often refer to the sisters as Oceanids. Some sources claim that the name Pleiades originates from the ancient Greek word plain, which means to sail. Plain means to sail. Guys, the ship, the boat that was on the church that I found within the cross, 
The ship, 144 just now on my clock, 144,000 chosen. Yeah, we're going to get into all this. Okay. In the ancient Mediterranean world, the day that the Pleiades cluster first appeared in the morning sky before sunrise announced the opening of the navigation season. The navigation season. In more detail, Maya is the eldest sister and known for her outstanding beauty as well as for her solitary life. The story goes that despite her beauty, she was a shy, wife-like woman who preferred her own company and lived alone in the caves. The name Maya means mother in Latin, and in other translations, Maya also means nurse or great one. Maya was seen by the Romans as their spring goddess, which is why our fifth month is called May. At one time, her star shone brighter than any of the others. However, the next sister's star, Alcyone, now shines even brighter, which some say symbolizes sibling rivalry between the two sisters in the past. In Greek mythology, Alcyone, also known as Halcyon, the second sister, was known as the leader. During the Halcyon days, when the world was filled with joy, prosperity, and tranquility, she watched over the Mediterranean Sea, making it calm and safe for sailors, a lot like her mother as well. The son of a morning star, Sussex, the king of Thessaly and Alcyon, were married and devoted to each other until the day they deceived Zeus and Hera by pretending to be them. So they pretended to be Zeus and Hera. In a rage, Zeus waited for the lovers to separate before launching a thunderstorm over the seas, causing Sussex's boat to capsize and him to drown. Later, Zeus turned Alcyon and Sussex into the Halcyon birds, so as for the couple to be together. Birds, sirens, all of it. So Merope is more commonly accepted as a lost Pleiad because hers was the last star to be mapped by astronomers and it's the faintest star in the cluster not visible to the naked eye. Some legends suggest that she became lost because she hid her face in shame at marrying a mortal king. Here's that again, that message having to do with Ariel being ashamed of marrying a mortal or a human. Same story as Merope. Sisyphus, she hid that from her titan, her father. Sisyphus, others say that Merope hid her face out of shame because her husband was a criminal, whose punishment was to roll a heavy stone up a hill, again to the edge of heaven, though it always rolled back down. There are similarities here to Merope's father, Atlas, who kept the weight of the world on his shoulders. So see how those tie in with the rock and holding up the weight? Asterope, the Greek name of Asterope, translates to star, and she is traditionally portrayed as one of the weaker sisters, perhaps because this star is one of the two that shines less brightly than the others. She was the mother of Oinomos by Ares, the god of the war. Some versions of the myth claim that Oinomos was in fact her husband, not her son, and that after having four children together, he later became king of Pisa. Kalino is commonly translated and meaning melon or swarthy. And me and Rashida had been getting messages about the word swarthy having to do with pirates and things, so it's interesting. Kalino, like Asterope, shines less brightly than the others, supposedly because she wasn't supposedly because she was once struck by lightning by Theon the Younger. However, she had many children, including sons, Lycus, which was a wolf, and Chimerius, Chimeris, which is a part lion, dragon, and goat, by the titan Prometheus, and sons Lycus and Nycidus by Poseidon, the god of the sea. Tegeta in the myths, Tegeta, like Maya, valued her independence and lived alone in the mountains. Zeus also had his eyes set on Tegeta and tried to seduce her. Before he could reach her, she ran into the arms of Artemis, who turned Tegeta into a doe or a deer so that she could escape the clutches of Zeus. Her Heracles, Hercules, also tried to woo her. Electra, known as the third brightest star, Electra bore four children, four again, one of which was Dardanus, who later became the founder of the ancient city of Troy. Some sources claim that Electra is a lost Pleiad after she vanished following the fall of Troy and Dardanus's death. And another version of the myth states that all seven sisters committed suicide because they were so saddened by either the fate of their father, Atlas, or by the loss of their siblings, the Hyades or Eidus. 
In turn, Zeus, the ruler of the Greek gods, immortalized the sisters by placing them in the sky, aka the cosmic ocean, where the seven sisters formed the star cluster known thereafter as the Pleiades. And what is more, the Pleiades are known through various mythological accounts throughout the world. The Native Americans call them the seven star girls. The Aboriginal legends call them the seven sisters. They call them the young Garmura, watcher girls. And in the Hindu legend, the Pleiades are collectively known in India as the Kritika, Kritika, the wives of the seven wise men, named the seven rishis or the seven sages, or the six mothers of the war god Murugan, who developed six faces, one for each of them. If you think of Game of Thrones, there's a lot of references to the Pleiades in that. Um, Arya, for example, is known as the woman of many faces. She stunder, studies under the man of many faces and she fights relentlessly like a war god would. She actually, yeah. So in Japan, the Pleiades in Japanese culture, one known as Subaru, and are usually referred to as being seven stars. Subaru also means, here we go, unite or unity in Japanese. In the account of Dionysus, the myth goes as follows. The Pleiades were called Atlantids after their father Atlas and Hesperides from their mother Hespin, Hesperus, daughters of Hesperus, brother of Atlas, making him the uncle of his bride. The sisters excelled in beauty, beauty and chastity and thus Bagaris, the ring of the Egyptians, was sealed with desire to get the maidens into his power and consequently he dispatched pirates by sea with ardors to seize the girls and deliver them into his hands and later on Heracles conquered this prince when he the latter attempted to sacrifice the hero meanwhile the pirates who had seized the girls while they were playing in a certain garden and carried them off and fleeing swiftly into their ships had sailed away with them. And Heracles came up to the pirates as they were taking their meal on a certain strand and learning from the maidens what had taken place. He slew the pirates to a man and brought the girls back to Atlas. In return, the father, who is so grateful to Heracles for his kindly deed, that he not only gladly gave him such assistance as his labor called for, but also instructed him quite freely in the knowledge of astrology. The Greek poet Hesiod mentions the Pleiades several times in his works and days. As the Pleiades are primarily winter stars because they are visible from about October to April in the Northern Hemisphere, the opposite Pleiades for the Southern Hemisphere, they feature prominently in the ancient agricultural calendar. Here is a bit of advice from Hesiod. And if long in seas, you for sailing the stormy seas, and when the Pleiades flee mighty Orion and plunge into the misty deep and all the gusty winds are raging, then do not keep your ship on the wine dark sea. But as I bid you, remember to work the land. Works in days 618 through 623 by Hesiod between 750 and 650 BC, ancient Greek poet, Merope region. Okay. In the 14th century Balkans, there's a Merope region as well. In the 14th century Balkans, Merope, Bulgarian, Mapona or Meropa in Bulgarian, was subregion of Thrace in modern northern Greece and southern Bulgaria. The region lay in the western and middle part of the Rhodope Mountains. The term is only found in the writings of Byzantine Emperor John V1. Catechizunus, Merope extended to the Nestus River in the west and to the town of Gratinopolis in the east. Bulgarian historian Plamen Pavlov defies Merope as an encompassing course of the Arda River up until the Chepilar River and including the fortress of Zveta Irina, which is Saint Irene and Podvis. There are many regions um, equated to Podvis which I'll mention here in a minute, but of course I looked up St. Irene, okay? St. Irene literally connects the story of Ariel so much. And when I found this, I, I was like, no way, no way. Um, so in 1343, John V1 of Katavinusis greeted Branton Merope to Bulgarian brigand 
Momchil for his military assistance in the Byzantine Civil War of 1341 to 1347. After Momchil changed sides in the Civil War and was ultimately defeated by Cantus the Canusis in 1345, Merope returned to Byzantine sovereignty. Irene of Rome. Saint Irene of Rome died 288 AD, was a Christian woman in the Roman Empire during the reign of Diocletian. She was the wife of Saint Castellus, according to Christian legend. She attended to Saint Sebastian. Irene attended to Saint Sebastian. Ariel, Sebastian. Okay. Hello. After he was wounded by Mauritanian archers, Irene was the wife of St. Catalus, who, according to tra tradition, who was in the service of the Roman Empire. She was later widowed when Catalus was martyred for practicing Christianity and converting others to the religion. After the death of her husband, Irene continued to be active in the Christian community in Rome. According to hagiography, when St. Sebastian was shot with the arrows practicing Christianity, Irene tended to his wounds. St. Sebastian, tended by St. Irene, was the subject of many paintings by Bendetta Luti and others. Merope. Merope's translation is face turned and bee eater. And if you know, like Tam Tara B, like I received from Light Language that a friend had spoken to me in the past, I'll enter it here if I can find it. But Kept talking about she is the bee, she is the Tam Tara bee. I'm like, holy cow. Um, Merope was one of the Pleiades seven star nymph daughters of the Titan Atlas. I looked up the nymph definition. It's an ameth it's a mythological spirit of nature, imagined as a beautiful maiden inhabiting rivers, woods, or other locations. The idyllic world of nymphs and shepherds, a beautiful young woman, an immature form of an insect that does not change greatly as it grows. For example, a dragonfly, a mayfly, or a locust. And it's also an artificial fly made to resemble the aquatic nymph, the aquatic, which has to do with water, nymph of an insect used in fishing fishing guys a mainly brown butterfly that frequents woods and forests um it's i can't read that origin greek nymphae it means nymph bride latin nympha to old french means nymphae latin to new bear newber like nuberu <laughs> but it newber means to be the wife of nymph is late middle english okay greek myths nymph is any large class of inferior female divinities the nymphs were usually associated with fertile and growing things such as trees or with water and they were not immortal but they were extremely long-lived and were on the whole kindly disposed towards men they were known as nature goddesses okay so that's all we have for now i have to get going but trust me there is more coming more puzzle pieces to connect but the sebastian one the marrying immortal the spells all of it all of it so we'll get into more of this trust me there's even more that you're going to be like what but it actually really connects the story of ariel to Merovi, and you're going to be like holy cow i love you all so much thank you so much for watching liking commenting subscribing make sure you give this a like comment below how this resonated for you Remember, there is more coming, so I'll be connecting more when I have more time. But yeah, let me know how you enjoyed it. Give this a like. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't mix, miss the next one. And make sure you subscribe because you're entered in a chance to win a free reading with me. If you were interested in my readings, they're all listed below under my Etsy shop link. Check out my reviews. Hundreds of reviews on there and lots of amazing readings. Some timeless that you're drawn to. Um, courses healings, meditations, songs, light language activations. Check it out. I love you all so much. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.